Oh, okay, my friends. So as we wrap up the second day, I just want to chat about something that we've talked about a lot in previous classes in, in uh, Math 98 and Math 105. Hey everybody, I just wanted to take a real quick pause in the middle of this video and explain. Um, I often say in these videos things like, if you had me in 98 or if you had me in 105. Quite a few of you might not have had me in either of those classes. 98, uh, as I record this video, is only a couple years old and 105, although it's been around for probably 20 plus years, you might not have taken it yourself. That doesn't mean that the stuff we're talking about means nothing to you. It just means that I definitely did chat and explore some of these things in my previous classes. Um, so you can just tune me out. I, I, I'm programmed now to view Math 98 as leading into Math 105 as leading into Math 243 because that's what I spent the past 10 years of my life doing here. So just want to let you know you're not at a disadvantage for not having 98 or 105. Uh, it's just that that 98 and 105 was a more targeted set of courses leading to 243. That's all. I wanted to get it off my chest. Now, we talked about, let me just go back in my mind now, we've talked about pie charts, scatter plots, histograms, line graphs, all kinds of stuff in all those classes. And we'll talk about them again in here as we, as we kind of need them, they'll show up. But I guess I want to emphasize that sometimes the art of statistics or the science of statistics is not about crunching numbers blindly, but more about taking a look at the data in a different way. And graphical displays can actually help us with this. For example, take a look at this. This is, I got the source here for you if you want to go check it out. It's a number of dog breeds uh, and their corresponding average lifespans. So you got the Afghan hound down with the whippet and all the years they live. And you can kind of scroll down. Your eyes might be drawn as you go through, look through this. Like the Irish wolfhound only lives seven years on average. But the, uh, the cardigan Welsh corgi lives 13 and the Cairn Terrier 14. So this is a data set. It's a distribution of ages. Totally cool. Um, what some statisticians have done with this, and I actually found this online, was take that data and group it into this histogram right here. So if, you, if you're not used to looking at histograms, let's just take a peek at this one again. I know we've seen them before with the, uh, with the coin flips and the coin spins. But what this tells us is back in this chart, the least uh, number of human years was six. And I'm looking for it right now and I'm having a hard time. Oh, there it is, the bulldog on average lives. Oh, well, the bulldog on, on average only lives six years. And the largest number of years is 14. I did see one of those, the Lhasa Apsa is 14, the Jack and Parson Russell Terriers are 14. So what we've got here is we've got a listing of all the average lifespans. And then how many, the vertically is how many species are in that lifespan. So there's one dog, must be just the bulldog, uh, lives six years. There must be three species or three breeds, I guess, three breeds that live seven, three breeds that live eight. The mode, we'll talk more about that next class, uh, 18 breeds actually live to be an average of 12. And this is fascinating. We're going to call this a right-leaning, left-skewed distribution uh, tomorrow in class. But this isn't what it is to me. What interests me is this. I went to the American Kennel Club's categories of all these dogs, and I took a look at whether they were, by size, I took a look at whether they were toy, small, medium, or giant, I believe. We'll find out here in a second if I remember that correctly. Toy, small, medium, and large. That's what it was. Toy, small, medium, and large. So, yes, there are 18 breeds that live an average of 12 years. But of that 18 breeds, three of them are toy breeds, three more are small breeds, and the remainder are medium breeds. So each bar now is made up of the size of the breed. And I found this fascinating. I want you, in the homework, if you choose to do the homework, I want you to tell me what's fascinating about this. What do you notice more here than here? What do you know? It's exactly the same histogram shape, right? It's exactly the same histogram. It goes does that exact same thing here. But what do you find interesting when you look at the sizes of the breeds too? So you can see that just simply adding uh, another dimension to a somewhat boring histogram might give you some more information. Um, let's talk money. There's a $100 bill. 
not to scale. <laughs> That's 100 $100 bills, otherwise known as 10,000 bucks, wrapped up for you. That right there, that's a million bucks. That's if you take 100 of the previous 10,000 packets. Now, none of these pictures was to scale. So let's make it to scale now. That's what a billion dollars would look like. We've got a six foot tall guy standing next to it. We've got 10 pallets of money. Uh, so we can move around with a forklift, I guess. We've got a lady sitting on a couch that's worth $46.7 million. So again, there's a million dollars. There's a billion. Why am I doing this? Because I want you to understand what a trillion dollars is without just saying it's a thousand times bigger than that. Yes, it's a thousand times bigger than that. But what does a thousand times bigger than that look like? Well, it looks like this. That's what a trillion dollars would actually look like. Yeah, it's one with 12 zeros after it. Do you see the guy and the girl on her couch down there? And the White House? and the 18-wheeler, and the plane back there. Maybe it's a little hard to see. The plane is sitting on a football field. I love this little anecdote I put at the bottom here. If you spent $1 million every day since the birth of Jesus, you still wouldn't have spent this much money. But that doesn't stop our government, does it? Right there. This was what the U.S. debt looked like about five or six years ago as I typed this. In 2015, that's what the national debt looked like. You can see it on the sign right there. It was about $16.4 trillion back then. Unfortunately, now, as I'm actually making this video, it's about double that. It's $27 trillion. So I was trying to come up with a cool way of visualizing what $27 trillion looks like, and I, I can't make a graphic like this when I'm not gifted in that way. So I just started doing what I can do, which is math, and I, I did a little bit of figuring. If you took 27 trillion $1 bills and started up, say, up here in the corner of Northeast Oregon and started laying $1 bills on the ground so that they didn't overlap. So in other words, carpet the state of Oregon with $1 bills. You would actually carpet the entire state and still have enough left over after covering Oregon to carpet my entire home state of Delaware four times. Words like millions and billions and trillions are just extraordinarily hard for human beings to process. So I think in a lot of ways, it's better to look at them like this. At least it gives them some context. So I like to end with this one just because it's just another way of looking at a piece of data that comes across your uh, across your your computer screen. Twenty seven trillion dollars, yes, twenty seven trillion dollars. Yeah, but what is twenty seven trillion dollars? And that's where I really think statistics helps. It helps us make sense of the world around us. And just like that, we've come full circle. Next time, we'll get into some of the nuts and bolts.